No. Oh, you are okay, okay ma? Sir, uh, yeah, this is, is it good. visible? Yeah, yeah. Visible? You go to yes, the you are good to go. Just remain like this. So, good evening, friends. I warmly wish, uh, on behalf of the PG Clinics, to all of you a very happy Doctor's yeah. Day. Those who have been working in the front line, and this year's theme has been the family doctors and the general practitioners who have been working online. But I would say all the specialists only have been working online and the front line. Uh, work this so on behalf of the PG clinics, due respects to all of you who have been uh, working hard for uh, this difficult situation. So thank you friends for joining. Today we have two important uh, exam cases. Uh, one is mainly contributed by Professor T. Srinivasan sir from Coimbatore Medical right. College. The second case is contributed by Mm, Professor okay. Srikumar mm -hmm. Ramachandran from Government Medical Why College. We have very eminent faculty from across the country. We have Professor Tejasvi ma'am from BM Patil, Bijapur, Kalevani ma'am from Saptagiri, uh, Bengaluru, and uh, we have uh, Swa Swagata ma'am who will be joining us shortly. Radha Varma ma'am uh, is a very eminent, uh, very senior teacher from Sion. But now she is working with the Swapan and the Parak Medical Center. Uh, she has more than 25 years of experience of teaching experience. Swagata ma'am is from Ames Gopal. She has been earlier been with us. So we look forward to the presentation. And I also welcome our uh, senior faculty members who have been with us through all the journey. Karna sir, Srinivasan sir, Karna Karan sir, Hitesh sir, Rajiv Sahai sir. Thank you very much for all the faculty who have been with us through this wonderful journey. So, we, we have two cases to be presented. So, Kavya will go first. The other candidate will be joining us second. So, the invited faculty take priority. So, I request uh, the invited faculty to take over. Kavya, please start your presentation. Yes. Good luck to you. Please uh, tell about yourself, yes, your unit chief and head of the department and start your presentation. Yes, All sir. the very best. Thank you, sir. All the best, Kavya. Thank you, sir. Sir, good evening, sir or madam. I am Dr. Kavya. I am doing my final year uh, MS post-graduation in Government Coimbatore Medical College. I thank my chief, my HOD, Dr. Lakshmi Narayani, madam, my chief, Dr. Ravi, sir, and my guide, Dr. Srinivasan, sir, and my assistant professors, Dr. Radhika, madam, and Kartikeyan, sir, for giving me this opportunity to present in the forum. And uh, happy Doctor's Day to all the senior doctors and teachers here. Going to the presentation, uh, a post-menopausal post -menopause lady, Mrs. X, aged 65 years, who is former by occupation, hailing from Navakarai Koyamathur, presented to our OPD with complaints of lump in the right breast since three months, complaints of pain in the right breast lump since 15 days. History of presenting illness, patient was apparently normal till three months back when she noticed a painless lump in her right breast while walking, which was initially small in size, gradually progressed to the present size, which was almost three times the initial size, associated with continuous dull aching pain in the lump region since 15 days, non-radiating and aggravated while doing work, for which she consulted a physician who prescribed analgesics following which her pain relieved. Patient also gives history of a reddish nodule over the breast lump one week back, which was painless, no discharge, not associated with ulceration of skin, no history of trauma, no history of nipple discharge or retraction present, no history of presence of other lumps in the opposite breast or axilla, no history of ulceration, no history of fever, no history of low backache or pain in the limbs, no history of cough, hemoptysis or dyspnea, no history of pain abdomen or yellowish discoloration of eyes, no history of seizures, headache, blurring of vision, history of loss of weight present, history of uh, loss of appetite present. Coming to past history, no history of uh, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, bronchial asthma, tuberculosis, epilepsy, coronary artery disease or thyroid disorders, no history of previous surgeries, drug allergies, any similar illness or intervention for breast disease in the past, no history of use of oral contraceptive pills or hormone replacement therapy or previous history of chest wall irradiation. Personal history, patient takes mixed diet, has normal sleep pattern, has regular bowel and bladder habits. She is a non-smoker and non-alcoholic and has no history of consumption of tobacco in any form. 
menstrual and obstetric history her age at menarche was 15 years she is married since 40 years para one living one age at first childbirth was 20 years by full term normal vaginal delivery she had breastfed for 1 year and 6 months she has a single daughter 39 year old 39 year old she had regular she had regular 28 days cycle flow lasting for 3 to 4 days not associated with passage of clots or dysmenorrhea her age at menopause was 64 years family history no history of similar illness or ovarian or gi gastrointestinal malignancies in her any of her in her or any of her relatives can we stop you here kavya yes ma'am yeah at the end of history can i just go to the history uh ma'am a post menopausal lady she hey, came no, no, i don't want you to tell just put that slide okay ma'am the no, end you put, of a, history. put a summary ma'am oh ma history history go to the history history kavya history you have not put the summary she has not put the summary madam No, sir. History only. Let us just put that slide off. Yeah, go to the first slide. Go to the first. How is history of reproduction asked? Um, history of indrawing of nipple uh, or any uh, change in the appearance of nipple or area or nipple area or complex has been asked. Ma'am, she gained menopause at sixty-four years. That was a history told by the patient, ma'am. The papa. Hmm. Hmm. Means just one year back, Kavya. That is. Yes, ma'am. So till Pada. one year back, she was Pada. menstruating. Ma'am, sorry, ma'am. Till one year back, she was menstruating. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It comes under the very fact that it represented. Hmm. Ma'am, have you verified that history? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, at the end of history, what is your clinical diagnosis? Uh, ma'am, it is a case of uh, uh, carcinoma breast, ma'am. Hmm. Why do you say so? Ma'am, uh, uh, she is a postmenopausal lady, elderly female, uh, presenting with a uh, painless progressive lump, which has recently become painful, uh, hmm. suggestive of uh, malignancy, unless proved otherwise, ma'am. Okay, Dr. Radha was asking you some a question of how do you take the history of nipple retraction? Yeah, because retraction is something patient won't say. History is in the language of the patient, so patient is not going to tell you it's retracted, right? Yes, ma'am. When you use the word retraction, it is a medical uh, term. History is in the language of the patient. Okay, ma'am. I'll correct it, ma'am. No, no, no. You asked. Yeah, I don't know what, what is what is uh, other people's opinion. I just wanted to ask. Madam, the local language. She said. Uh, That that uh, we saw it as we tell it as kambu or something which has gone in. She said, "Madam, it is recent retraction." Uh, yes, wow. madam. That that, that is, is important. That, that is what. Recent retraction. Yeah. That was important. Uh, recent retraction. Recent retraction. Yes, sir. Retraction, right? Yes, Rajis. Rajis, sir. Yes. I just want to say that this concept of history being in the patient's language yes, no. is a bit outdated now. it is the surgeon's interpretation of what the patient is saying what what the correlation of family history kavya mama patient has no history of any breast ovarian or gastrointestinal malignancies in her family ma'am nor in any of her so how is it relevant kavya Ma'am, her of familial breast cancers uh, uh, you associated with hereditary breast cancers associated with BRCA one and two are more commonly breast ovarian and uh, GI colon malignancies. Ma'am, so I ask history of any of these malignancies in the family. Which family members were? First degree. Was it told first, about daughters? First degree, second. Her first uh, and second. Mother about them. Now I can't see something. No, no, Savia. You, if I saw Later. your history was. Among the daughters, you have written about daughters. That is important, or something else is important. Mama, her mother and first degree relatives. Ah, so her mother and siblings, yes, her sir. sisters, not yes, her daughter. Her daughter, <laughs> the mother's history becomes mother, auntie, right? Sisters. Okay, I have a question. You yes, told sir. that she has only one daughter of thirty-nine years, isn't it? Yes. Has yes, she not conceived later on, or was there no, any other reason? She did not conceive after that, ma'am. Okay, she still. I mean, she had a family life, but she has not conceived. Yes, ma'am. 
Okay, so that's an important history. And what is something different from other common her age group ladies, what we have noticed here? Do you think 65 years or 64 years is the average age for menopause? No, ma'am. The patient uh, history she gave, like she uh, she attained menopause only one year back. Mm. And she is 65? Yes, According ma to her? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you think these two points are important? Yes, ma'am. Increased estrogen exposure is... Can examine her? Ma'am? Do you think these two points are important when we yes, examine? Yes, ma'am. Hmm? Increased uh, estrogen exposure is one of the risk factor for uh, carcinoma of breast milk. <laughs> was, it, was it menstruation or was it DUB or something? Ma'am, she was menstruating. Her cycles were normal, ma'am. Not DUB or AAB, ma'am. Till 64. Yes, ma'am. Could the yes, age be incorrect? Dr. Kavya, could the age be incorrect? Because 64 is for yes. normal menstruation is slightly it's, yes. it's, it's certainly odd. Yes, sir. Also, Kavya, I would like you to take a social history in cases of malignancy. Okay, because sir. she will require a lot of support during treatment. Yes, and you sir. cannot progress, she can afford it at all. What okay, is the sir. social status? She's a farmer, sir. She's from poor right. social economic background. So if you if you if she's undergoing to go a prolonged treatment for malignancy, whether the family will support her, right? You must, yes, sir. as a surgeon, we must look after the social aspects also. Yes, sir. Why did you tell us about that she was married 45 years back? What is the relevance of that? Sir, uh, marital history. So how, do you, how that is relevant? So tell at what age was she married? You said 45 years ago. So is it early marriage or late uh, marriage? It's not. It's uh, early early marriage, ma'am. 43 years. Uh, up to 43 years she was married, right? Yes, ma'am. The span of her marriage is 43 years, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So that's what I'm asking. How it is related with your patient? Relevant, Telling yeah. about that. How it is related with that? Is there any significance of that telling about the duration of the total marriage duration or is, it, is it the it is the childbirth or it is the child childbirth or it is the nulli parity all those are important not the yes, marriage is it yes sir what is the difference between a familiar breast cancer and hereditary breast cancer Sir, familial breast cancer occurs due to cluster of uh, genes which run in the cluster of uh, genes which run in the family, whereas this hereditary breast cancers we can point out to specific gene genes gene mutations which transmit from one individual to other individuals sir, in generations. So hereditary is basically the genetic one. Genetic one. Yes, the sir. family can be environmental. It can be the genetic mixture of all those things. Yes, sir. Now tell what are the risk factors you will ask in the History of a breast cancer patient. What the uh, risk factors? What the age, of the, to ask? age of the patient, sir. How is the age relevant? Ma'am, increased age risk increases, ma'am. Nowadays, we see a lot of youngsters, 20s, 20, we see a lot of young uh, women having cancer in 20s, 30s. Ma'am, familial breast cancers uh, usually present at an younger age group, ma'am. So, okay. familial or hereditary breast cancers. So one is the age of that, you are right. What else? Uh, what are the other risk factors you are going to ask in the history itself? Sir, uh, geographic region, sir. Right. Western countries, it's more common than uh, in underdeveloped de developing countries like our country. So you know the how much is the epidemiology in the US and how much it is in the India? Yes, sir. How much is that? Sir, one in every 12 people are affected in US, sir. Even, even which community more, in India even are, more. Okay, which in community India? in India? Which community in India are affected by C breast? I don't know how much it is relevant here. I don't know. Which community? I don't know. 
uh, it's Parsis and Punjabis. That's what we were taught in our time. So I don't know what it is today. Oh, but, yeah. uh, you still when the Parsis are the maximum one. Yeah. Yes, so I'm not seeing that's what we were taught in our times, Parsi. Yeah. Okay. So one of the reasons can be they get married late, so childbirth is late. And hereditary and genetic both. Okay, sir. What about diet, sir? Is diet Kavya? Need anything related uh, to diet? Yes, ma'am. A uh, high fat diet is directly proportional, ma'am. In Western countries, people will usually they consume high fat diet. What happens then if they consume high fat diet? Uh, more conversion of uh, east, more conversion of uh, estradiol from steroids, ma'am. More adipose tissue, so increased risk, ma'am. Increased estrogen. However, you were telling about the risk factors. One was the age. Second, you told about the environmental factors. What else? Yes. Endocrine, endocrine system, sir. Like early menarche. Okay. Late menopause. So, do you know what are the various absolute risk factors and what are the various relative risk factors? Sir, absolute risk factors is age, sex, family, family history. Yes. The relative risk factors are diet. Be more specific, they are say one and two in the family. Yes, sir. Highest what was no. <coughs> Sir, ma'am, sorry, ma'am. Parity. Nulli parity, ma'am. Nulli parity more increased risk, ma'am. It is the uninterrupted exposure to the estrogen, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can we go ahead with the examination? Yes, ma'am. I think the students must know about the absolute risk factors and the relative risk factors. Absolute risk factors are only five or six. Yes. One is the age of the patient. Yes, sir. Second is the family history. Okay, sir. Third is the patient suffering by herself, like the contralateral breast cancer. Okay, sir. Fourth is the if the patient had a history of benign breast disease in the past. And that came out as like a ADH, atypical ductal hyperplasia. Okay, sir. And fifth is a BRCA mutation, which is there. So yes, these, sir. Are the, these are the absolute risk factors. And yes, all others, which is there, like early menarche, late menopause, parity, nulli parity, obesity, diet, environmental, and all those, okay, they are the relative risk factors. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Any uh, Western uh, celebrity ஒரே <laughs> 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 Who is, con who is conscious, oriented to time, place, and person. Mm -hmm. She was afebrile. Her pulse rate is 76 beats per minute, regular in rhythm, normal in character, and has good volume. Her blood pressure is 127, 120 per 70 millimeters of mercury, recorded in uh, right, uh, right upper arm in sitting position. Her respiratory rate is 16 cycles per minute. Her height is 150 centimeters and weight is 55 kg. Her BMI is 24.4 kilograms per meter square. She has no pallor, icterus, sinuses, clubbing, generalized lymphadenopathy or pedal edema. No upper limb edema is seen. Her head to toe examination was normal. Skull and spine examination was normal. And ECOG score is 1. Breast, coming to breast, local examination, breast examination, inspection in a well-lit room after getting consent with oh, adequate... Sorry, ma'am. Work with stoma, slowly, yeah, yeah. slowly. Okay, I'm not able to catch up with you. Okay, okay, madam, I'll tell her. Go slowly. Let's yes, sir. In a well-lit room, after getting consent with adequate exposure, with arms by the side of the body, bilateral breast looks asymmetrical, right breast bigger and is at a higher level than the left breast, fullness in right now. breast... Put the picture now instead of this. This one. Yeah, yeah. Now you continue, please. Yes, ma'am. Fullness in the right breast is seen involving no. upper... Leave the picture and you continue. Okay. Describe with the picture in your presence. Okay, that okay. will be much better. Hmm? Okay. Fullness in right breast is noted 
in upper outer upper inner quadrant extending till nipple areola complex pod orange up uh, pod orange appearance of the skin is noted a reddish okay, okay, now yeah move move for a very long time yeah move, move this not, fast yeah, move this picture otherwise right. youtube will be blocked move this fast oh, okay, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah madam that's the reason madam he didn't okay, put it sorry sorry i didn't care move the slide move the slide move it okay. yes upper outer and upper inner quadrant extending till nipple areola complex downwards it's irregular surface pod orange appearance seen over and are surrounding the lung a reddish nodule of size 3 into 3 cm visible in upper outer quadrant over the lung with the well defined margins smooth surface no skin changes seen over the nodule a true cut biopsy mark seen at 10 o'clock position at about 1 cm from nipple areola complex no scars dimpling or ulceration seen what's what is pure the orange pure orange uh, is the orange peel appearance of the skin over the lump which is due to blockage of uh, subdermal move the, lymphatic move the slide move the slide kavya yes ma'am change it change it change it we are done no 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 go ahead go ahead okay ma'am yeah you tell this now examination no no answer to madam's questions what is pure orange yes it is due to uh, sub, uh, subdermal lymphatic obstruction by malignant cells no what is it all question is what is it all got a complete answer lymphatic why do, have, why do you have those why is it pure orange what is the meaning of little meaning of pure orange and which orange peel skin of orange peel uh, yeah yeah more. one more one more one more point kavya sir madam is asking for one more point one is one is the subdermal lymphatics with what Hair follicles. What happens? Hair follicles. I told. In draw, in drawing of hair follicles, ma'am. From where is it? Where from where is? Which language is this word derived from? For the orange, uh, French, ma'am. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Examination of nipple areola complex. Right nipple areola complex is seen at a higher level than the left and is displaced more towards right side. right nipple areola complex uh, circumferential retraction of uh, nipple seen no visible nipple discharge at the teat of the nipple inspection by arms raised above the head pod orange appearance of uh, breast seen almost involving entire upper half of the breast till nipple areola complex bilateral infra mammary folds free of lump inspection by patient leaning forwards both breast fall forward equally inspection by pressing her waist no skin changes evident over the lump inspection in semi recumbent position lump and pd orange appear uh, became more obvious infra mammary region free of the lump palpation it is done by okay, patient what, uh, kavya i'll interrupt you can you yes, run pass through the different positions you have examined and why the uh, significance of examining yes, inspection in different position run it fast yes, ma'am first of inspection by patient sitting in uh, uh, arms by the side of her body yeah uh gen appearance of the lump uh, we can see upper part of the breast dr kavya look, move yeah. this uh, slide the breast looking slides please don't keep permanent, permanent. Okay. general uh, so talk generally it's okay not pertaining to this patient just generally what are the different what are the significance of this uh, the different positions postures yes. inspection yes ma'am ma'am patient will be uh, patient with arm side by her uh, arm side by her body you can see the upper outer upper uh, part of the breast more clearly than in the uh, lower part and with I arms raised by the side are you making the muscle taut some muscle taut pectoral is major ma'am okay second go on fast run it fast yes yes ma'am arms raised above the head uh, infra mammary folds we can see any lump or any skin changes more evident and in axilla, the axilla axilla to the axilla axillary lump also will be visible ma'am yeah. then then uh, patient on leaning forward fixity to chest wall can be made out Yeah. So, what happens if it's a benign uh, lump? What happens to it? It falls forward. It, it falls forward. But both breasts will be at the same level. Fine. Then inspection with the uh, patient in uh, with the with the, her arms pressing the waist. Skin changes will be more evident if it is fixed to pectoral is major. Is it? Yes, ma'am. Is it mentioned somewhere like that? Ma'am. By fixing uh, to the waist. The skin changes will become more evident. Yes, ma'am. How? 
ma'am when patient presses her waist pectoralis major will muscle will be contracted mm. so changes skin changes by muscle by tumor will get taut and over uh, overlying skin will changes will be more uh, provided prominent. the skin is tethered it's not mandatory all the time remember huh? yes ma'am by yes, putting ma the muscle into contraction we are basically going to assess the fixity to the muscle fixity to the chest wall there right okay okay ma'am yeah please go ahead and not to, not on inspection okay not on inspection okay okay i don't think yeah. uh, it is a palpatory finding palpatory finding yeah okay you think arms i agree because yes, it stretches the skin and so it becomes more prominent but not by putting the muscle into contraction you spoke okay. about retraction in inspection yes ma'am sir nipple retraction was present ma'am circumferential nipple retraction no, yeah, did you speak about it i i, I didn't catch it okay fine yes ma'am Ma'am, I'll go ahead with palpation, ma'am. Yeah, please, 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 please. Palpation is done by patient in semi-recumbent position. Local rise of temperature present over the nodule. Tenderness over the biopsy site. Inspective findings were confirmed. A lump of size, approximately eight into eight centimeters, present in upper outer quadrant, upper inner quadrant, and behind nipple areola complex, with well-defined margins, irregular surface, hard in consistency, fixed to the skin, pure orange appearance present. Not mobile within the breast, not fixed to pectoralis major or serratus anterior. A nodule of size three into three centimeters seen in upper outer quadrant, with well defined margins, immobile and hard in consistency. No, no, no. Other nodules. There are two lumps. I didn't know there are two lumps. Is it, ma'am? It's a single lump, ma'am, involving both upper outer and inner quadrant, extending till the. Uh, You are showing us two lumps, no? That one palpation in inspection. Two lumps. lumps. Even I got the impressions: two lumps, eight by eight oh. centimeter, and the nodule which we can see. Nodule was present over the lump, ma'am, but it's a single lump, ma'am. Mm, so you cannot say. Uh, you cannot. It, uh, what from what you are presenting, it looks like there are two different lumps. You can probably you can say another nodule over the lump is palpable better. Okay, ma'am. That okay. would say that there is one lump, and there is a nod nodule which is more prominent. Okay, ma'am. Yes, That's correct. Ah, it is infiltrating the skin, and it's uh, it's about to open up. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's the impression I should give. When I read it, also I thought it's another swelling in the axilla or what? Ah, uh, no, ma'am. Yeah. Well, correct. Okay, so that should not be there. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. How do you differentiate between a fungating lump and an infiltrating lump? Fungating lump, inverted and raised and inverted uh, edges will be present, ma'am. Infiltrating lump more more oh, commonly, like in phyllodes. Ma'am, sorry, ma'am. How do you differentiate that it is a pressure symptom or it is infiltration? Pressure necrosis or it is infiltration? Decubitus ulcer with undermined edges will be present in. Uh, Pressures. If it's a pressure ulcer, ma'am. Ma, where? What are you talking? Ma, where is decubitus ulcer? Oh, talking about pleurodes. I'm talking about how do you differentiate uh, whether it's fungating or? I was very clearly asking about the breast lump. Breast it's, lump. But it's yeah. really fungating or it is infiltration. What? It's fungating or it is because of pressure. See, so try to understand. Is yes, ma'am. Pressure, pressure necrosis means the lump is causing pressure on the skin. Or yes, ma'am. Is it? The lump infiltrating. Okay. How do you differentiate these two? Because it's going to alter your. How do you differentiate? Right. How do you differentiate? This can be phyllodes, and it is a huge lump, and it is causing a pressure necrosis, or it is malignancy causing fungation. There is a simple test for this. She told one part. Only one part you have to say. She told my mom told the answer also. Pinchable uh, skin, pinchable over the lump. How do you test that? Will pinch the skin over the lump, ma'am. Probe test, ma'am. Probe okay. test. Yes. That's what we are. Yeah, that's what we are looking for. Probe test. If the skin gets stretched so much and loses yes. its uh, capacity, and because of the continuous enlargement of the lump, there will be a gap. They run like a malignant lump where it's impossible to put in either a probe or try to lift the skin because of the infiltration. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Probe. Give the probe test, right? No, I have no, I have no power supply here. Okay, fine. Have you carry on? Yes, ma'am. 
Please go ahead. Hmm. Examination of axilla, inspection, no pullus or nodules or ulceration seen in the axilla. Palpation, a 1.5 to 1.5 centimeter central group of lymph node palpable, which was mobile, hard in consistency with well-defined margins, smooth surface, skin over the swelling was normal. Other group of axillary lymph nodes not palpable. Opposite breast and axilla were, was normal and bilateral supraclavicular fossa were normal. Okay. Oh. I remember you said uh, you also checked for uh, the lump infiltrating serratus anterior. You checked for serratus anterior, yes, right? Yes, Where is the lump present? Upper outer and upper inner quadrant. Ma upper outer and inner quadrant. Right? Yes, and if you have to test for uh, yeah. does serratus come there in that region? Where, ma'am? Sorry, ma'am. Does, get... does the serratus muscle come in that region? In upper outer quadrant, we'll get, ma'am. Uh, tell me the attachments. Uh, it arises from uh, uh, second to sixth ribs. It's attached to intercostal region, ma'am. Second to sixth ribs. So talking about pectoralis or serratus? Serratus anterior, ma'am. Lateral aspect of the ribs. Yes, sir, Kavya. Superlateral surfaces of uh, first, uh, first to eighth or ninth ribs, ma'am. If you're not clear, don't tell. Okay. Is there anyone else who's uh, there in the group can tell or text? The upper outer quadrant, it is predominantly the pectoral group of muscles, right? Yes, ma'am. You have a huge lump which involves the chest wall right up to the mid axillary line, then the question of involvement of the serratus anterior and just to put the serratus muscles into contraction and try to look for it. Majority of the time, I'm not telling all the time, it okay. practically by then would have become immobile. Okay. Yes. This lump as per your description suggests that it is mainly occupying the upper half of the breast, isn't it? Yes. Both upper inner and upper outer quadrant. So we will be very happy if you are able to tell whether it has involved the pectoral Muscles, pectoral fascia, and then the upper extent, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Kavya, Kavya, in palpation, did you palpate the normal breast first? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I, I, I didn't get it. So, okay. Why, why are you looking for rise of temperature and tenderness as one of the first examination? Why not? Why don't you say it later? I mean, any palpation, we start with local rise of temperature. Uh, di differentials can change, ma'am. Inflammatory breast cancer uh, can present with increased rise of temperature. So, no, no, why is it the first thing you have to say in any lump temperature and tenderness? What happens if you say when at the palpate? The temperature can change, ma'am, when we palpate yeah. constantly. Right. Carry on, Kavya. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Coming to systemic examination, her cardiovascular system, S1, S2 heart sounds were heard, no murmurs heard, a respiratory system, bilateral air entry was present and no added sounds were there. Per abdomen, uh, soft, it was soft, non-tender, no hepatomegaly, her bowel sounds were present. So central nervous system, no focal neurological deficit was there. Summary of the case. Oh, wait, 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 abdomen. Abdomen findings, show me the abdomen. Some more what abdominal findings it? and abdominal examination is incomplete. incomplete. We wish to know some more details, right? Yes, ma'am. What more you should have told us? Sister Mary Joseph nodule, umbilical nodule. Mm. You told so us normal. abdominal wall is normal. Huh? Yes, ma'am. Other areas. What else? Fluid in the abdomen. Ah, you should have told me. Non then no hepatomegaly, then what else? What else did you look for? She is Ashtar. apparently a perimenopausal lady. Mm. Please remember. You it. only insisted many times. She is yes, very clear that she has stopped menstruating only a year earlier. Mm. So she comes under perimenopausal, madam already has told. So what should you look for? And it's an ap apparently advanced lump, isn't it? What are the other things you would like to look for in the abdomen? Are you interested in looking for free fluid? Yes, ma'am. Why? Peritoneal deposits, ma'am. Peritoneal mets. One is peritoneal mets. You can't palpate peritoneal mets, Kavya, please. I can't palpate, but presence of free fluid. Do it. Yes. And more important, you're not coming to that. Something else also. Chalo, we'll give you another clue. Lower abdomen. Broken. 
Crookenberg's tumor, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You don't want to. You don't want to look for. So very important. Tell that. Tell me why you didn't want to tell. Mm -hmm. Why you didn't want to tell you tell. Mom, it's more common in uh, pre-menopausal age group. So exactly, yeah. We are coming to that only. But you said she stopped menstruating only a year back. Yes. So we, there is something called as perimenopausal, which Madam was mentioning. What does it mean? Perimenopausal age. She can present with the Crookenberg's tumor. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. That's a different set of patients, isn't it? Who have partial symptoms and Expected hmm? outcome yeah, related have... to either menstruating or the other way. How many years between the gap of the menstruation and stoppage is called as perimenopause? You tell me. She is not aware of perimenopause. Right, Kavya? Anyone else? The pages can text in the chat box. Yeah. So, so from the age of cessation of periods for up to five years. Okay. Right, ma'am? Uh, pages and ma'am? Yeah, yeah, usually it is this. Up to that said, before the menopause, two years and beyond this, two to three years. And on average, five years five around years. the stoppage. Stop the center point three. of the stoppage. Okay. All right. so because why that is important is ovary continues to be active in the perimenopausal and they are treated as premenopausal patients. Okay, ma'am. For all practical purposes. Okay. So yeah. this, is, this history is very important. Yes, ma'am. What about, uh, uh, is it uh, mandatory to do a per vaginal or per rectal in this? Breast case. Uh, hmm? For this only, you should have done. Yes, ma'am. Why are you thinking? It's Otherwise, we'll end up requesting radiologist, this person, that person. Yeah, and I, 64 years of uh, menstruation. That's how I should bit, have. Uh, yes, ma'am. So, okay. Rajiv, sir, your comments. Huh? Rajiv sir, Dr. Rajiv sir, I just sir wants to ask something. Okay, proceed, proceed, Kavya. Okay, understands. any other things you would like to mention in your examination? It's a locally advanced tumor, right? Yes, ma'am. So what are all the other things you wish to share? Uh, clinically, no evidence of uh, systemic metastasis. Like, which are the areas which you examined? And try to look for uh, lung metastasis. Okay. Back, lower back, vertebral metastasis. Mm. Which, bone is involved, which bone is usually involved in metastasis? Mm. Lumbar vertebra more common, ma'am. Upper limb? Is it lumbar? Can it be more specific? Body of lumbar vertebra, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Not that. Thoraco lumbar region. Thoraco lumbar region. Okay. Mm. Now you tell me why. Ma'am, due to uh, uh, valveless communication of veins between uh, breast and uh, vertebra by Batson's vertebral plexus, ma'am. What from the breast communicates with them? Posterior intercostal veins, ma'am. Intercostal veins. Why do you get hepatic metastasis in case of breast tumor? What is the mode of spread? Ma'am, it can be lymphatic or hematogenous, ma'am. Lymphatic com communications exist between uh, uh, in, in, uh, uh, lower up breast and uh, aphromatic. Yeah. Intraperitoneal, ma'am. As well as hematogenous spread can also be there, ma'am. Uh, Kavya, uh, ma'am asked you about uh, patient's plexus and you said it's a uh, thoracodorsal vertebrae. Why thoracodorsal? Why not lumbar? Why not cervical? My, my question was that, sir. She was young. Right. I got it. That's so why I wanted to clarify. Why do you think it happens in the thoracodorsal region and not any other region? Any idea about it? Valveless communication. That is there in everywhere. That prostate also. The whole of the spinal, the what the uh, venous plexus over the spine is valveless. So why does it happen in the thoracodorsal region? Not sure, sir. Why not cervical? Why not sacral? That's yeah. not because of respiration. Okay, sir. There's negative pressure, so it is drawn up there. Okay, sir. That's the reason. Okay, also, sir. Also, uh, ma'am asked you about. Why do you palpate for while palpation? Why do you look for tenderness and temperature? The reason most important is if it's tender, if it's tender, you're going to upset your patient in the first go. So if it's tender, you're going your your examination will be different from a from a lump which is not tender. Okay, sir. Right? Yes, sir. 
Kavya, how did Ma you examine the axilla? What are the groups of axillary lymph nodes you have examined? Mama, anterior group, lateral group, uh, central group, uh, uh, apical group, and posterior and group. How did you examine the posterior group? Uh, first, I stood in the back of the patient. Uh, with the left hand, uh, right side of the right hand of patient was lifted up and with the right hand, right posterior axillary fold was palpated along the lateral border of scapula. Okay. Around lateral border. Okay. In the posterior, the posterior axillary, axillary fold. The posterior okay. axillary fold. Yeah, in front of the posterior. Okay, okay carry on now. Yes. Coming to the summary. Uh, a postmenopausal lady, Mrs. X, aged to 65 years, presented with progressively increasing painless lump, which has now become painful since 15 days, and history of a reddish nodule over the lump since one week. On examination, a 18 to 8 centimeter hard right breast lump in upper outer quadrant, upper inner quadrant, and nipple areola complex with beauty orange appearance. Immobile lump, fixed to skin, not fixed to pectoralis major or chest wall, with 3 into 3 centimeters reddish nodule, hard immobile nodule in upper outer quadrant seen, with right nipple areola complex, displaced upwards. In the upper part of the lump. Reddish nodule in the upper part of the lump. Okay, I'm correcting you again. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Please repeat. Uh, 3 into 3 centimeters reddish hard immobile nodule over the lump. Okay. is seen in a, over the lump uh, is seen with nipple areola complex displays upwards and more towards the right with the 1.5 into 1.5 centimeter hard mobile central group of axillary lymph nodes palpable with no features suggestive of systemic metastasis so my provisional diagnosis is locally advanced right-sided carcinoma breast of stage uh, t4b n1 m0 what are the nodules on the chest called as Cancrenous nodules, ma'am. What is the name? Armor? Armor's chest, ma'am. Okay. You don't call it right-sided or left-sided. It is right breast or left breast. Okay? Yes. Hmm? It's right-sided yes. is like when you talk in the swelling in the scrotum, right side and left side. But here yes. it's right breast and left breast. Okay? Yes. Yeah. So it's a T4B. T4B is? Involvement of uh, skin involvement. Tumor more than 5 centimeters with involvement of skin. Ma is it more than 5 centimeters? Yes, ma'am. Can you just tell me T staging? Uh, T1 is less than 2 centimeters. T2 is uh, 2 to 5 centimeters. T3 is more than 5 centimeters. T4A mm. is uh, any size with uh, ah, just water. Yes, that's what you said. More than T 5, right? Yes, ma'am. Any size any with size. Any size of skin? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. A, A is with chest wall involvement, ma'am. What do you mean by that, chest wall? Chest wall is uh, ribs, intercostal spaces, and serratus anterior involvement, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That is why serratus anterior examination is important. Yes, ma'am. That is involved only, mainly if the lump is in the lower outer part. Okay, ma'am. Okay, the upper outer part mainly involves the uh, pectoralis. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> T4B is uh, skin involvement. T4C is both uh, skin and chest wall involvement. And T4D is inflammatory carcinoma. Okay, what do you uh, what do you mean by skin involvement? Skin involvement is uh, uh, either if the patient has pure orange appearance, nodules, or ulceration. Okay, what about puckering of skin? Not puckering of that. skin. Uh, puckering of the skin is will not come under uh, skin involvement. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you get puckering? Puckering is due to involvement of malignant cells infiltrating the pupus ligament, ma'am, which mm -hmm. causes uh, indrawing of the skin. Why do you get retraction of nipple? Retraction of nipple is due to involvement of lactiferous ducts, ma'am. Malignant cells infiltrating lactiferous ducts. Which malignancy do you get involvement of nipple and areola? Paget's disease, ma'am. What is the definition of Paget's disease of breast? Superficial uh, skin manifestation of uh, underlying malig uh, breast malignancy. Superficial manifestation of a deep ductal carcinoma. Yes, good, right. It could be ductal carcinoma or, or invasive ductal invasive carcinoma. Ductal carcinoma.
what is the differential diagnosis for phages now that you brought it eczema ma'am eczema of the nipple something else is a discoloration no mm. Hmm? Can you can you think of melanoma? Yes, ma'am. Superficial spreading melanoma. So it could be one of the differential diagnoses. Okay, then in that yeah. case, how do you differentiate clinically or any by any tests? Ma'am, we can take a punch biopsy. Pardon? We can take a punch biopsy of the lesion and we can look for paged cells, ma'am. In case of uh, paged disease. Hmm. Anything else? It will be unilateral. Paget's disease will more often be an unilateral rather whereas eczema will be bilateral. No? Not eczema. You are differentiating yourself with melanoma and now you are saying eczema. What is more convenient for you? You are telling me. Hmm? Yeah. We are talking about the difference between these two. Even the histochemistry. Yes, ma'am. Yes, 100 will be. Confirm melanoma. Yes. That yes, is confirm melanoma. Yeah, you can proceed. I think Lakshmi has a question there. Heathering and what is the question, uh, Lakshmi? Difference between dimpling, puckering, and tethering, they're all same. It is all due to um, what to say the ligaments of Cooper involvement. Cooper. Okay. Basically, what is ligament of Cooper? Uh, it's it is attached from a pectoral is pectoral no, fascia. No, no, see, listen, yeah. Kavya, you're always jumping to another thing. When we ask what is it, you have to first say what it is. Then you have to say it is because so and so. Okay, ma'am. Just get my point. When we ask you to define, you should first define. You should not say it is due to. But what is it? Corpus ligament, it's ah. one of the structural support of the breast which extends from pectoral fascia to the dermis of the skin. Ma so these are fibrous strands from the fibrous. Yes. From it is from the pectoralis fascia which tethers to the skin. Yes, ma'am. So when it gets infiltrated, it pulls the skin. That doesn't yes. mean skin is involved. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Lakshmi, is there doubt clear? Okay, continue, Kav. That's it. Sir, yeah, that's it. Sir, question, sir? Ma'am, was it? Maybe you can ask, ma'am. Okay, just a minute. Madam has joined. Another madam has joined. Madam, oh. you can start, madam. Good evening, madam. Good evening. Happy uh, doctor. Okay. Happy doctor. Yeah. Thank you. Same to you all. You can start, madam. madam. Okay. Case. okay. So clinically, it is a locally advanced right uh, breast carcinoma stage three B. Now, uh, how will you go on with the investigations, ma'am? First, I would like to do investigations to confirm my diagnosis, ma'am. Hmm. Since she's a postmenopausal lady, I'll do a mammography, bilateral mammography with sonomammography. Uh, and then I'll go for image guided uh, core biopsy. Image guided core biopsy? If it's okay. a well defined lump, we can you have go ahead. Lump? No, you have the yes. lump well, uh, you are examining, you know better. Yes, ma'am. That's no, a huge case, lump. In case you answer, ma'am, caviar, pertaining to this case, you should answer. Okay. So the examiners expect you. Hmm? So in this okay. case, it's a big lump. So you need a mate guided. No, sir. Uh, so you tell them. The assessment is, this is your patient. You are going to be the treating person and how you are going to proceed. It's not, you know, a hypothetical or your plan. So you should say, okay, this is my patient and this is how I'm going to proceed. Fine. Okay. It's a well-defined lump. So what yes. will you do? I'll go ahead after mammography. I'll go ahead with the uh, true cut biopsy of the lesion, ma'am. Why you want to finish up mammography first, ma'am? Uh, if we do the histopathological examination first, and if we do radiological examination next, there'll be distortion of uh, architecture in the radiography, ma'am. After biopsy, so we'll not be able to get the correct diagnosis, appropriate diagnosis. Please non-invasive first. Yes, sir. What will mammography give you extra knowledge? Apart from you know it is a lump, it is having all the symptoms of a carcinoma. So it is clinically more or less confirmed that it is a carcinoma. So why do you want to do a mammography? Um, it will tell whether if it's a unil, uh, single lump or it's a multiple lump, multifocal or multicentric involvement. Multifocal, multicentric, yes. In this patient, 
multicentric, multifocal, is it going to make a difference for you? You have a patient with a huge lump, 8 into 8 centimeter, involving all the quadrants. Yes, so when is this multifocality and multicentricity is important for you yes, to catch up on the mammography? Uh, it's, it's more important in early breast cancer, ma'am. Exactly. When you plan for? Uh, breast cancer. 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 Okay, so what do you mean by multicentric and multifocal? Multifocal is uh, uh, more than a single lump within the same quadrant, whereas multicentric is more than a single lump with within uh, with other quadrants, not within the same quadrant. Okay, you told the same thing. Don't you want to look at the other breast you also? You told the same thing for both. Yes, ma'am. Focal and centric, you said same thing. Um, focal is within the same quadrant, more than a single lump. Whereas centering is multicentric is more than a single lump in other quadrants, not in the same quadrant. Multicentric is within the same quadrant. Multifocal is different. You are, you are confusing me. Okay. Multicentric is sorry. Multicentric same. you said is in the other quadrants. Okay, more yes, than four centimeter away from the primary. Yes, ma'am. Okay, focal is within that. Within, within the same. Yes, ma'am. So, what else very So, what will you, uh, now you have done a true cut, so what should be your possible in this is, is the post-menopausal locally advanced breast carcinoma. So, yes, what will you like to have along with your true cut report? X-ray, uh, what can the X-ray mammography show you? What are the findings of X-ray mammography? It's such a huge lump. Uh, it will be an irregular uh, lump with uh, ir irregular and speculated margins, ma'am. Okay. There can be stippled calcifications. Mm -hmm. In sonomammography, we can look for uh, lymph nodes as well as increased vascularity surrounding the lump. Mm -hmm. And you it will be. A, a, uh, would you, you like to do sonomammography or ma sonography of the axilla then? Sonography of the axilla, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Anything with the skin? Thickness of the skin, ma'am. Thickness of the skin will be there because it is a you are uh, saying that there is tethering and there is a uh, having a skin involvement. So that is very well visible in extra mammogram. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So uh, uh, will you along with true cut biopsy with a 1.5 centimeter into 1.5 centimeter hard mobile central group of axillary lymph node? Yes, ma'am. Uh, have something. And do something with the axilla also before you go in for a routine uh, for your surgical expertise. FNAC of the lymph node. FNAC. What will they show? It is now. It is a hard lymph node. What? Uh, so it is a metastatic. You are saying it is a locally advanced breast carcinoma. What is the definition of locally advanced breast carcinoma? Uh, stage two B three uh, three uh, stage two B three A and three B three B. Cancers will come under uh, locally advanced breast carcinoma. So it is generally N1? Yes, ma'am. N1 so or N2, ma'am. N1 or N2. You are saying hard, mobile, so clinically it is a malignant? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So if even if FNAC doesn't prove it is malignancy for your surgical expert, uh, you will take it as a malignant lymph nodes only. Yes, so what extra will you get by doing a FNAC from that lymph node? Are you getting something extra information? No. Can no it, something recently, things are changing. So you, if you say you're doing FNSC, Madam is twisting the question for you. <laughs> Earlier, yes, we used to think when lymph node is already palpable, why do you need FNSC? Now there is a newer concept. Yes. For treatment of axilla. What is the newer concept of treatment of axilla? That is why Madam is probing that question again and again. Okay, we will address it later. Let's go to further, you know, because okay. it will come in the treatment. Uh, so uh, now you, uh, what uh, you have having your true cut, you will do your immunohistochemistry. Okay, along okay. with the true cut. Will you plan a right modified radical mastectomy in this patient? In this patient, or will you like to have a new adjuvant? I like to have a new. For this patient, ma'am. Why? Since this is a huge lump, uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy will uh, decrease the down will downstage the tumor. 
so that uh, BCS can be possible after uh, New York event, ma'am. BCS. Sir, don't you think you need to work up for for regarding mm. the uh, possibility of presence of distant metastases? We have yes, just brought her and kept at three B, not uh, confirmed yes. it, isn't yes. it? Yes, ma'am. Mm. And you there are specific investigations you would like to ask yeah. to put her directly into the M one category. We don't know, right? Yes, ma'am. Or hopefully she remains at this level. Mm. Staging investigations will do, ma'am. Mm. Uh, bone scan, whole body bone scan, mm. CECT chest, and uh, CECT abdomen and pelvis, ma'am. Mm. No, can we do one investigation? Any examiners differ in that? Any other one single investigation? PET CT, ma'am. Mm. Is it important? Yes, ma'am. Oh, how is it helpful for you? Madam, I would like to ask you one thing, ma'am. Is PET CT advised every time? Because in certain institutions like us, we don't have a PET CT. So when we don't have a bone scan, so what should the student say? What is practiced in their institution? Skeletal service. Yeah, that you tell. Madam, am I correct, madam? Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. absolutely. Because PET CT is not available. No. And the patient can't afford it. We are doing a plain X-ray abdomen. We do a CT of the spine. That's all, madam. We don't do a, even a bone scan. So now accepted thing is at least minimum is chest CT, sir. Uh, chest CT, we are doing. Yes, yes. CT, 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 chest and abdomen. Yes, because... Uh, Exam, we have to say, sir, for metastatic. Please, we have please, to say. Please, please, sir, please. If the patient is symptomatic, we should go in for the bone scan. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Yes, I think bone scan is a standard protocol for metastatic work. Locally workup. advanced, uh, yes, especially for locally advanced, no, sir. Mm. New adjuvant. Yeah. Okay, sir. So, and uh, see, the examiners can ask what to do better investigation. When, they, yeah. when it is asked, you have to say PET CT. That is the most accepted. Yes. Yeah, if facilities are available, I will go for PET CT. If facilities are available, accepted, yes. According to their guidelines, given. Okay. If the facilities are not available, then you will think of, you will say it is CT abdomen and ultrasound abdomen. So, yes, CT chest and ultrasound. First, mm -hmm. do ultrasound abdomen and look for metastasis, which will pick up very easily. And CT chest is important for you to know for lung metastasis. Then, bone scan. It's a locally advanced uh, cancer, bone scan. Okay. Okay. So also, should be done. For planning of treatment, you have to first diagnose your case that is it operable breast carcinoma or inoperable breast carcinoma. Yes, then we will see whether we, we should downstage the patient or not. BCS is not the accepted modality in a locally advanced breast carcinoma, which is you are downstaging. So it is being done by experienced persons, but routinely, unless you mark the tumor bed, you don't go in for a BCS after new adjuvant. Okay, yes, juries are coming, but accepted modality is a proper modified radical mastectomy after a new adjuvant. That the is the whole purpose of new adjuvant here is, is not downstaging. We are yes. downsizing the tumor to get enough skin so that we get a reasonable, acceptable scar there because already it is a locally advanced malignancy and we really don't know the metastatic status. We are not very confident of labeling that lady as staging her down. It yes. is going to help the operating surgeon and the local wound healing much better, right? Yeah. Moreover, nowadays we know that breast carcinoma spreads by the facial claw. Earlier, health state had a different opinion. Now we are we, we know it is a multi-systemic disease right from the start. So we want to prevent the metastasis. That's why in a locally advanced breast carcinoma, as Madam has already said, for operative, we should, we should have a skin cover and to prevent the metastasis we give new adjuvant. And one more advantage is that you know what chemotherapy the patient will respond to. Okay, so how many, uh, now I think, let us go to the treatment, ma'am. Yes, sure. One final question I'll ask before yeah, treatment. Yeah. Kavya, when the lump is palpable. Yes, ma'am. Okay. What is the uh, doubling of the tumor cell in that? Oh, maybe 
0.5 centimeter long. Uh, what is the minimal size for it to be palpated? What is the tumor doubling time in breast? You forgot. Then the whole thing of your metastasis, everything you will be able to explain. See, just for the interest of all the others also. At 20th cell of uh, doubling, neovascularization occurs. The neovascularization appears means it's already a systemic case. It's going to become systemic. And then when the lump is just less than 5.5 centimeters, just about 0.5 centimeter, it is 27th doubling. Means at the size of 0.5, it's already systemic. That is why breast cancer is considered as a systemic disease from the very beginning. Until unless you catch it before 0.5 centimeter or less than 20th cell doubling, which is almost impossible. Yes. Right? So it's always treated. So we look at all these things, then we say, yes, that CT is, has become an accept, more accepted modality of investigation until unless you don't have the facility. So you would say, if I have facility, I would prefer this. If I do not have, then I'll go for this. So that, that saves you from both the sides, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Any, any other uh, professors who want to defer or uh, add to this? Sir? Rajiv, Rajiv sir is typing. Rajiv sir, you can tell it or sir, please. Sir, if you're there. Typing takes some time. <laughs> I just wanted to say that the system of uh, quadrant is out now. So okay. multifocal and multicentric is on the distance sides. of yes. the normal breast of the tissue, breast tissue between the two tumors. Yes. Sir. So less than five centimeters or more than five, five centimeters. Okay, sir. I think I, I, I will like to ask uh, other uh, teachers whether uh, PET CT is mandatory to for metastatic workup or not. I don't think uh, it is a regular advice. No, it unless, is not a regular advice. Yes, yes. So, unless patient, uh, many times the uh, patient insists for those who are going for new adjuvant and BCS, they might insist. Otherwise, probably, or uh, su subjective choice for surgeons or treating onco oncologists. Otherwise, we don't advise PET CT. It is advisable um, in metastatic uh, recurrence more and yes. more of a prognostic value than yes. of a diagnostic yes. because yes. it may of be course. false positive yes. it is, rate is yes. very yes. high. Yes, so it is not a standard protocol in metastatic no. work for LBC. Yes, madam. Thank you. Kaveh, can you go ahead with the management? We are left with very little time now. Ten minutes. Yes. Yes. How do you like to go about? You have planned and you had joined. What are the chemotherapy drugs, standard chemotherapy drugs which are commonly used? Adriamycin, uh, cyclophosphamide, ma'am. We'll start with adriamycin and cyclophosphamide. Mm -hmm. After uh, two to three cycles, depending upon the response, we can add uh, paclitaxel or docetaxel. Ma'am, taxins we can add. If it's uh, HER2 positive, Herceptin, carboplatin can also be added with this. See, how does the presence or absence of ERPR at the ATR2 status matter in the prognosis and our further management? Uh, if patient is ERPR positive, uh, hormonal therapy tamoxifen has a very good response in decreasing the future recurrence after the surgery, ma'am. Mm. And then overall no survival. Mm. Come on, continue, continue. And overall survival rates also increase and decreases recurrence even in contralateral uh, breast with mm. the hormonal therapy, ma'am. Mm. In the new adjuvant uh, setting, generally hormonal therapy is not yet standard treatment yes ma'am but unless yes it is being used in many centers nowadays but uh, yet to be uh, standard care yes if it is erpr positive we should what should else will if it is a erpr positive we say that the this is a hormone uh, responsive yes, will ai 67 help you in, Yes, ma'am. KI67, is, uh, if it is more, uh, if it is increased, it has high proliferative index. So we have to, uh, if it is ERPR positive, adding uh, tamoxifen will definitely help in decreasing the recurrence, ma'am. So if you are giving a new adjuvant, will you like to have a, or can you give hormone, uh, this, um, hormone um, hormonal chemotherapy along with NSCT? Yes, ma'am. We can give, ma'am. No, generally we don't give. Why? Decrease the side effect profile. Yes. Yeah. So, so, what about the role of radiotherapy in this lady? 
post operative uh, post operatively we can give radiotherapy ma'am in order to decrease the local loco regional recurrence okay now with the two or three cycles of your chemotherapy standard chemotherapy with ca a reasonable response is there we'll believe that around 30 to 40% which is apparently a reasonable good response how do you to go about further uh we can go ahead with uh, modified radical mastectomy ma'am mm. okay and uh, post surgery we can give uh, we can, uh, by after seeing the biopsy histopathological bi biopsy report of the specimen we mm. can plan uh, uh, adjuvant therapy adjuvant chemotherapy and uh, continue with if it is erp or positive we'll continue with hormonal therapy ma'am and radiotherapy ma'am if it's not positive we'll like to complete the chemotherapy and then go ahead for the hormone therapy or simultaneous simultaneously we can start ma'am after chemotherapy advantage after chemotherapy or along with uh, mostly after chemotherapy ma'am you know by in view of side effect profile okay, for completion of the chemotherapy isn't it yes ma'am yes ma'am and then only we'll start with hormonal therapy. hormonal therapy depending on the hormone response okay what do you explain the attenders now or the family members regarding the prognosis patient has to be in a assumption that she is likely to be erpr positive and hr negative okay we'll explain her about uh, side effects ma'am and we'll ask her to be in a regular follow up regular is because annual ma'am one of the common malignancies which we are expected to handle on day to day basis and unless our follow up and communication with the patient is appropriate we are likely to end up these patients coming to us after 2 3 years with recurrence isn't it a good yes, very good clear communication is very very essential so how will you decide the frequency of the follow up and what you would like to do in every follow up every follow up will examine the local post operative uh, post oh, operative okay. first year she has completed her chemotherapy radiotherapy you have put her on either tamoxifen or other hormone hmm, responsive drugs and what will you advise her uh, six monthly clinical examination ma'am and annual mammography will follow up first year first year So most of these events happened in the first two years. Yes, ma'am. So how do you like to plan? Can it be more frequent? Every month, monthly visit, ma'am. Three months. Three months. Three months. Right? Okay, ma'am. Okay, this is usually the standard practice, right? Yes, Depending on the response of the patient, you can modify a little. The average understanding with most of us, I wouldn't call it is a hundred percent protocol. Is first year every three months, second year, no, either three months or. Six, or six months. months. Then later on, six months up to five years, and later on she will come and tell you hello on her either on her birthday or your birthday. Hmm? Okay. What are the investigations you would like to ask when she comes? Uh, One is obviously thorough clinical examination. What are the specific areas you would like to look for when you examine? Scar site, ma'am. Hmm? Scar site and axilla, ma'am. Hmm? And any limb edema is present. Hmm? Upper limb edema. and mm -hmm. our contralateral breast mam for any, uh, any other new lump yes okay investigations uh, mammography mam annual mam mammograph okay for the opposite breast fine uh, coagulation profile mam she she's on tamoxifen okay mm -hmm. tamoxifen won't you do a uh, full gynecological examination yes, also for vaginal and then sonography okay. yes important is Endometrial cancer risk is increased if she's on okay. tamoxifen. So, so endometrial thickness, thickness, yes, ma'am. Sir, I'm alkaline phosphate. Yes, get an ultrasound, which is easily accessible accessible anywhere. If required, get a chest X-ray done. Hmm? Yes, ma'am. If there is any suspicious nodule or something over the chest wall, get a FNS. FNS. Hmm. Hmm. So these are the minimum protocols, and then assess for presence or likely chances of developing DVT. Explain. And ensure that she comes regularly. Okay. Yes. Any any inputs from Vani, Madam, Swagatha, Madam, and uh, Radha, Madam? No. Regarding the follow up. Follow up, it is okay. Um, okay. Triple negative is asked, ma. Madam is asking if she turns out to be triple negative. Yes, ma'am. We go. We go ahead with the adjuvant chemotherapy. We'll complete the cycles, ma'am. Yeah, it is chemotherapy that is preferable. If it was yes. ERPR was positive, mainly hormonal. Now the treatment trend is all changing, you know. Yes. And by the time one of the questions there is after uh, uh, chemo or surgery and uh, investigation, see after 
usually if it is small tumors and uh, chemotherapy is given they may disappear with that with chemotherapy also but this one even if you go for surgery it's going to be only a palliative treatment that is why identifying axillary nodes has become important because today's concept is to conserve the axilla yes ma'am okay. as much as possible they are trying to avoid surgery in the axilla so with chemotherapy if axillary lymph nodes are disappear they still avoiding a axillary clearance there are a lot of newer concepts coming which you need to pick it up okay yes how do you label after giving your new adjuvant you have written as per tnm staging you have written small c t4b there is a clinical stage yes, okay yes. now with erpr you are having a pathological stage with the uh, true cut biopsy you have given the new adjuvant we have time or we need to wind up we have to wind up ma'am <laughs> okay fine no five okay. minutes Five minutes. Okay. Uh, with, with new adjuvant, how will you write in your prescription as per the eighth uh, AGCC? Any idea? No, ma'am. It is CYP. CYP. Okay. Okay. And then metastasis. You have already. You will already. M zero means no metastasis. Even M1. if you are having metastasis, even if you have not examined, you will write M zero. Yes, ma'am. Okay. But once you have examined, then it will be M zero or M one, whatever. Okay, ma'am. Okay, I am finished. Uh, you asked something about the lymph node, but I am kindly highlight on one. Okay, as for the lymph nodes, now you have, for that FNSC. What uh, as for the recent staging, there is N one, N two, N three also. Okay, so N one C is matted. If if you do a FNSC, you will be only knowing that yes, it is lymph node is positive, but after Uh, this FNSC, you will go in for a new adjuvant. After that new adjuvant, you again stage your axilla. That's why pre-operative staging of axilla is very important because, as already Madam has explained, that we are doing less and less of everything of surgery, also of axilla, also. Okay, now the more theory is gone because of the lymphedema and all the things we have gone in for less axillary, so we downstage the axilla also. See whether a proper uh, lymph node dissection we do only up to level two. Post op also uh, after new adjuvant we again restage our axilla and the breast. Both has to be restaged and then we will plan accordingly. Lakshmi, your question is answered there. Okay. Lakshmi, your question yes, is answered. Madam has answered that question of yours on the chat. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I think I am done. Yes, sir. yes, ma'am. So she has to just all that as uh, for the for the completion. Probably you will have to read about uh, which new adjuvant chemotherapy is preferred for a triple negative, and which hormones and how and all those dosages probably you could read up. But yes, uh, and also read little more about PET CT in the newer exams. Your there's going to be a lot of questions on that. Staging has changed. Yes. Well Thank presented. You. Good. 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 Thank, thank you, you madam thank you madam thank you all nice your history was very elaborate and nice yeah. <laughs> can i go and send the word with the next case yes can i go and uh, move on to the next case madam yes. uh, kavya do you Kavya's. have any questions or doubts to clarify from the national faculty yes. nothing call clear it's just bombarded with questions <laughs> thank you very much uh, thank you. the next case will be presented by dr intra Uh, Intra, are you with us, Doctor Intra? Yes, uh, yes, sir. I'm here. Yeah, uh, okay. Doctor Intra is uh, kindly contributed by Professor Shri Kumar Ramachandran from GMC Trivandrum. She'll be presenting a case on peripheral artery disease. Uh, Doctor Kavya, you have to unshare your yes. screen. Yes. Doctor Intra, please start your presentation. Yes, sir. Is my presentation? Kana, you have to go to the first slide. Make it full screen. Yeah, you are good to go. All the best. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Indra. Uh, I am from Garment Medical College. Camera on the laptop, ma. We are unable to see you. Uh, can you see me now? Perfect. Perfect. Good luck to you. Yes. Thank you, sir. 
my name is Indra. Uh, I am from Government Medical College, Trivandrum. Uh, my HOD is Dr. Abdul Lati, and uh, my head of unit is Dr. Asi Sri Kumar. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you go ahead. Um, my presentation is on a case of peripheral occlusive vascular disease. Uh, presenting Mr. Chandra Mohan, a 69 year old male. Uh, he's a hotel manager by occupation. Uh, he presented with complaints of intermittent pain in the bilateral calves for the past one year in bilateral lower limbs, uh, pain in the left foot at rest over the past two months, and ulcer over the left foot for the past two months. History of presenting illness, uh, patient gives a history of intermittent cramping type of pain of bilateral calves for the past one year. Pain was cramping in character, worsened on walking and relieved at rest. Patient typically says that he would rest for two minutes uh, before the pain subsides and he would start to walk again. He initially developed pain on his calves on walking a distance of 200 meters. Uh, the distance at which he developed the pain gradually decreased over time. And now uh, the patient develops pain even after a distance of five meters and patient is unable to cross his own bedroom by, as walking. And uh, he soon developed pain over the left foot over the past two months, which was a continuous, a severe type of pain, which was worsened at night. And he developed an ulcer over the lateral aspect of his little toe, um, which was followed by blackish discoloration of the toe. It was associated with pus discharge and he underwent recent disarticulation of the little toe two weeks back. He does not give any history of chest pain, uh, no history of fainting episodes, no history of blurring of vision, no weakness or paresthesias of uh, the upper limb. Uh, his past history is a known case of type 2 diabetes on insulin. He has no other known comorbidities, no history of previous surgeries, no history of drug allergies. Uh, personal history, he is a, um, a known smoker and he's been smoking for the past 50, 50 years uh, and he consumes a mixed vegetarian and non-vegetarian diet and bowel bladder habits are normal. Uh, I have forgotten to mention sleep here. His sleep has been disturbed due to constant pain over the past two months. So to summarize, uh, he is a 69 year old man. Is a known case of diabetes mellitus with past history of smoking, with intermittent claudication, a recent onset rest pain, and blackish discoloration of the little toe requiring disarticulation of the little toe. Uh, can I move on to examination, madam? Yeah, and the history, something you said. Can you just put that history? I wanted to take it, then I forgot. History, can you put that slide? Uh... This one, madam. Yeah. I forgot what I wanted to ask. Next slide. Yeah, here. You said no history of chest pain, fainting, blurred vision, weakness. Is there something else which is more important for a surgeon? Uh, madam, um... Uh, I had asked uh, these, uh, these, uh, this history because uh, uh, the, the patient has a history of uh, um, uh, history arterial um, insufficiency in the lower limbs. Mm. So uh, he might have arterial insufficiency uh, involving the coronary arteries causing mm. chest pain, uh, involving the carotid arteries causing mm. episode painting and something more. Uh, um, the, um, Which we come across in emergencies where we are called. Um, Eccentric ischemia, you forgot. Ah, yes, madam. Ah, Postprandial abdominal pain is important to ask you. Yes, madam. Okay, all the systems. We are more yes, concerned with that. Yes, madam. Okay, yes. Yeah, proceed. Otherwise, it's okay. Your history was good. Yes, ma'am. Uh, on general. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, what do you think is the cause now? What do you think is your is the yes, diagnosis, sorry. professional sorry. diagnosis by history uh, or a differential? So, uh, Sir, my provisional diagnosis is that the patient has a peripheral occlusive arterial disease um, and um, the etiology of, which limb? Of, um, of the left lower limb, sir. Uh, my bilateral lower limb predominantly left more than right. Okay. Why do you think, what are the points in favor of a, of a peripheral vascular disease in your history? Just go back to your history, please. Yes, sir. Sure. 
sir, uh, patient gives a history of um, uh, claudication, which was uh, which is a typically uh, uh, um, typically a cramping type of pain, uh, worsened on walking and relieved. Okay, that's the... fine. Claudication proceeding to rest Claud pain. Yes, One sir. Point. Claudication what proceeding else? to rest pain. There is history of uh, um, blackish discoloration, uh, which which is um, which means the patient is developing a gangrenous symptoms. Uh, with oh, asthma. that could. That could be because of diabetic foot. He's diabetic. What do you think is peripheral vascular disease? Uh, sir, um, the um, uh, concomitant history of both claudication as well as uh, ulceration. And the ulcer is typically uh, typically start, uh, developing at the tips of the tip of the uh, toes. Uh, right. While uh, a diabetic ulcer would be more on the plantar aspect of the foot. Uh, uh, so okay, okay. Next, what else? Uh, and um, uh, do you think this could be this could be uh, burgers? If yes, yeah. Why? If no, why? Uh, sir, uh, burgers disease uh, is uh, typically um, in a younger age group between uh, twenty to forty years, uh, okay. and um, uh, also uh, uh, burgers may also have involvement of the upper limbs, which this patient does not have, um, uh, and um, the. Mm. Upper limb also is rare, um, Indra. That can be isolated. Yeah. It's not necessary. Okay, okay, sir. You can't, you can't say that here. just because it doesn't have in the upper limb, it can't be burgers. Okay, okay, so, sir. The only thing is age here, which you yes, said. Yes, You don't have to prolong on that. He is diabetic and, and his age. Both are more in favor of uh, atherosclerosis. atherosclerosis. Right. So, someone's written it also. Yeah. That is because it's burgers. If it can't be burgers because... Burgess is smoking without any other risk factors. Yes, right? sir. Yes, That's sir. it. This is what we want to know. Yes, sir. And what is Burgess? What exactly happens there? What's the pathology? One word. It's a pan arthritis, madam. Yes. Pan yes. Um... Pan yes. Pan arthritis. Fine, fine. We proceed. Okay. So you think this is uh, this? Uh, what is the uh, what is uh, the cause of peripheral vascular disease in this patient? Sir, uh, he has risk factors of, um, uh, um, I think the reason is atherosclerosis for this patient, sir, because of uh, one is old age, is a known case of diabetes. And 69 is not old age, please. The <laughs> <laughs> has re reclassified. So we are all yeah. young, sir. The <laughs> <Sorry, sir. laughs> has reclassified. You have to go through that. Okay? Yes, please. To accept. Put it as medicine. It's nice that we'll accept it. It's nice that we'll accept it. It's very nice because after 60 and all, it's still middle aged. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Please agree. I forgot the. So, you think his, have his peripheral vascular disease is because of diabetes? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay. What are the risk factors? What are the risk factors of peripheral vascular disease at this age? At this age, uh, sir, diabetes, uh, dyslipidemia. Uh, smoking uh, um, and um, and and hypertension. Right. So, have you got a history of hypertension here? He does not have history of hypertension, sir. No drug history at all. He he, he does not have history. Have of you have you have you given taken the history? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, probably I probably missed it. Ah, yes, sir. Let's go back to your drug history. Like okay, I mean, I look, I I missed it because you didn't you didn't put uh, make it prominent. Yes, sir. I shall you have to for hypertension. You must make it prominent here because yes, that's sir. one of the major risk factors, right? Yes, sir. Right. So three of them: hypertension, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. Right. Yes, sir. And of course, smoking. Okay. Should we go on to the examination, please? So your yeah, diabetes, you said. Uh, did she answer, sir? The, what's the Difference in peripheral vascular disease and diabetes. What happens in diabetes? Right, right. I think that's important. Very important. Is it pathophysiology we're talking about? Yeah. Hmm? Hmm? Indra, you got the question? Yeah, uh, yes, madam. What uh, exactly happens in diabetes? Uh, madam, there is uh, microangiopathy. Microangiopathy, in... right. Okay, one. What else? Uh, there is um, also worsening of atherosclerosis in diabetes. Okay, accelerated atherosclerosis. What else? Uh, there is uh, uh, there is uh, neuropathy. Right. Uh, 
peripheral neuropathy which should be more peripheral specific. neuropathy which yes. happens and uh, and um, okay basically the cause for ulcer there bone to infection uh, it's a good movie hyperglycemia which um, uh, leads to um, um, Uh, where the where the blood acts as a good culture medium and um, oh, no 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 hyperglycemia okay tissue hyperglycemia right tissue that is not acting like, like a good culture medium here in diabetes rosa vasa vesoram so yes. once is itself the feeding vessels are compromised ah. the nerves the vessels everything gets compromised hmm? yes sir peripheral and, arterial disease could be associated with diabetes mellitus which nobody is giving much importance to that if both are coexisting then the limb loss is much higher there are more studies right. now of late okay you have to we have to look into peripheral vascular disease in diabetes okay and another cause of another cause of repeated infection is lazy w wbc syndrome the wbcs are lazy to they don't move so fast okay sir okay. yes sir okay proceed proceed Uh, moving on to examination uh, the patient was examined in a well lit room uh, with uh, informed consent uh, patient was conscious oriented cooperative um, he had no pallor ictus cyanosis uh, clubbing um, generalized lymphadenopathy he had bilateral uh, pitting pedal edema uh, his um, uh, vital examination pulse rate was measured in the left uh, radial artery it was uh, 80 per minute and it was regular in volume uh, regular in rhythm uh, rate and uh, normal in volume uh, blood pressure was 140 by 90 in the left brachial artery uh, blood pressure in the uh, lower limb was 100 by 60 uh, measured in the left posterior tibial artery and spo2 is 97% in room air um, there uh, in the right upper limb and in the bilateral lower limbs on inspection wait, 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 wait. now you brought this up yes why did you check bp in the upper limb and lower limb uh madam uh, there is um, uh, there is uh, when there is a patient with uh, peripheral vascular disease uh, there is um, uh, normally uh, the ankle break, break we have, I, I i did this for measuring the ankle brachial pressure index then why uh, didn't you do it you should have told that uh, yes madam uh, the ankle uh, that's where i was coming to when i said diabetes and peripheral arterial disease yes madam uh, so the abpi in this patient uh, was uh, 0.65 uh, mm. the um, um, ankle break ankle brachial pressure index um, uh, the ratio between the higher systolic blood pressure in the lower limb divided by the higher systolic blood pressure in the upper limb uh, and uh, for this patient it was 100 by 140 which is uh, 0.65 and um, uh, the um, uh, an abpi uh, uh, normally is 1 to 1.2 and um um abpi uh, of less than 1 uh, is suggestive of uh, peripheral occlusive arterial disease when will you call it as critical madam um, madam uh, critical is uh, less than 0.3 uh, is uh, critical limb ischemia right please go ahead uh in on inspection uh, there was a darkening of the skin uh, of bilateral lower limbs uh, in the mid calf region both bilateral lower limbs ma don't keep saying both lower limbs picture do we have a clinical picture here yeah, yeah she's put it is she's put it uh, yes madam but it's not uh, very evident uh, but um, there is uh, there was darkening relative darkening of the skin uh, hyperpigmentation you call don't say darkness yes madam hyperpigmentation of the skin uh, in the bilateral lower limbs below the uh, knee region there was loss of hair uh, increased shininess uh, and um, uh, of the the skin and there was also uh, uh, the nails were brittle in bilateral lower limbs both lower limbs both, both lower limbs mm. um there was an ulcer uh, which was 4 into 3 cm ulcer which was uh, the region of the disarticulation uh, of the left fifth toe um, and the ulcer had a punched out edge and had minimal slough and uh, serious discharge uh, the surrounding skin uh, around the ulcer was hyperpigmented pedal edema present yes yes madam there was um, there was bilateral edema madam both the legs are similar both the, both the legs had similar uh, comparable bilateral pedal edema madam uh, on palpation uh, the temperature of bilateral lower limbs were comparable and uh, skin was cool uh, the tenderness other uh, sorry madam is that skin up to cool. up to the knee 
up to the knee um, uh, bilaterally madam so both the limbs are cool so you can't <coughs> compare whether it's normal or it's yes because of the uh, atmospheric air yes madam okay uh, there was a, there was tenderness around the ulcer and the tenderness over the dorsal aspect of the foot uh, there was a the capillary refill time uh, was delayed to more than 5 seconds uh, over the left foot and uh, the burgess vascular angle uh, was measured to be 30 degrees um, how did you do that ma'am how did you do burgess vascular angle uh, madam uh, i made the patient lie supine and i asked the patient to lift his uh, lower limb without bending his knee uh, mm -hmm. above the level of the bed uh, and um, i uh, looked for development of pallor uh, and measured uh, the angle at which the pallor uh, developed over were the you able to were you able to look for pallor um was there a change in color of the skin uh, madam uh, his uh, there was um, yes madam uh, uh, it, it was not instantly but uh, it Could you see the change in color of the skin? You said yes. the skin skin is darkened, right? The skin darkening. How how will you appreciate pallor here? So what else do you look for? Um, sir. Um, how can you still demonstrate the Bose's angle? Um, the. If you hold it at that angle for some time, this pain. Yes. Yes, sir. That's it. Okay, Indra, you. I have one question. Was it really tenderness around the ulcer and foot, or was it hyperesthesia? Uh, there was, um, madam. Uh, uh, it was uh, uh, when when uh, actually it was hyperesthesia, madam. Just as I touched, uh, there was. Um, there is a vast difference between tenderness and hyperesthesia. Huh? Why? Yes, why? Why, madam, is insisting on that? Hyperesthesia um, and tenderness. What does that mean? Uh, madam because of the uh, the uh, involvement the patient has rest pain so that means that his nerve the nerves are involved so there is um, uh, no, the his toe is being disarticulated no for what uh, for the gang for gangrene madam mm -hmm. I, i'm sorry itra if the patient is having rest pain you cannot demonstrate burgess angle by pain sorry right please sir that's what i was trying to tell her i missed that sorry yes. and moreover patient has findings of gangrene Yes, ma'am. Okay, four foot. I mean, the foot ga gangrene of the toe and the hyperesthesia. So, or to say, hyperpigmentation. All that you cannot appreciate Burgess test. So, better you don't talk about Burgess test. Okay. You cannot appreciate Burgess angle is when patient has ischemic pain and does not have any signs signs of ischemia on the foot. You have already said patient has all signs of ischemia. Then you cannot identify. Right. Very right. Very right. Okay, madam. Even for capillary refilling time, same. The nails are brittle. You are saying that signs of ischemia is there. So how can you demonstrate the capillary refilling time? Okay, ma'am. Most of our rural patients, we cannot really appreciate. Yes. Most of them, because their nails are invariably brittle, brittle because of their barefoot walking, and their feet are exposed to many many trauma. So obviously, it's not very Irish. We couldn't really appreciate them, right? Yes, ma'am. Why, madam, is telling you ah. that prostheses was wet gangrene, the gangrene at the line of demarcation beyond that prostheses completely. May I intervene? One point. Yes, sir. Please. Sir. Uh, so it's a. Uh, I do agree that uh, if it's gangrenous, we cannot appreciate pain or uh, that. But high prostheses. But but there is an area proximal to the gangrenous area where we can appreciate the high prostheses and the pain. Yeah, that is so. That is. That is just proximal to it. Yes, sir. Yes, I agree. Just proximal to it, we can appreciate it. Yes. Okay, gangrenous areas, I do agree that. But just proximal to it, we can appreciate the yes. signs of ischemia, symptoms of ischemia and hyperesthesia. Yes, yes, it is at that uh, point. Just uh, proceed. Yes, yes. Yeah. Why do you think there is a hyper, this hyperesthesia is important clinical in there? Uh, madam, uh, that is just. at the uh, at the line of demarcation uh, there will be hyperesthesia uh, so um, we will know that the gangrene is proceeding up to that level madam uh, so that is the important all now indira madam is asking why there is hyperesthesia what's the mechanism of hyperesthesia uh, sir uh, there is um, 
in um, uh, wet gangrene uh, in in gang in gangrene basically there is uh, uh, met, uh, the metabolites of uh, uh, necrosis which are uh, causing intense inflammation uh, so uh, that um, will lead to a hyperesthesia of the nerves uh, surrounding the region of gangrene there's something called as pre gangrene are you aware Ah, yes, madam. Pre gangrenous changes are there. Yes, madam. Uh, so, in the colloquial terms, we use it as crying of the dying nerves. Yes, madam. So, it is giving us a red signal. The impending gangrene. Yes, Directly dependent on that level of hyperesthesia, the further management gets decided, right? Yes, the madam. Assessment of looking for hyperesthesia in addition to our other investigations will suggest whether where we have to plan for the intervention okay right please go ahead um peripheral pulses um uh, bilateral lower limbs uh, none of the peripheral pulses of both the lower limbs were palpable uh, bilateral carotid and upper limb pulses were palpable and were normal simple question where do you feel the dorsal is spreading i'm sorry for asking such a simple question where did you feel the speed is uh, Dorsal spedis is felt uh, in the um, uh, intermetatarsal uh, first, uh, the proximal intertar, proximal intermetatarsal region uh, first, uh, intermetatarsal region against the navicular bone. Navicular bone. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Here it is absent. All the pulses are absent. All the pulses were absent, madam, bilaterally. Including femoral. Including femoral, madam. Yes, madam. Both is it? Both lower limbs, both femoral, they're absent. Yes, ma'am, absent. And the patient um, still has a good color. He did not go in for gangrene. Um, uh, he he had uh, only a gang, pre, a gang uh, gangrene of the fifth toe, which was disarticulated. Madam. Why do you think femoral also is blocked? Then he still doesn't have, hasn't gone in for total gangrene. Madam, um, the, or because um, uh, the because the process has uh, has uh, it's a it's a chronic uh, limb ischemia, madam, which has taken over a long period of time. So there was time for the collaterals to develop. Mm. Okay, uh, so always come to the point first. Okay, there are good collaterals. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, there was yes. A, uh, there was an ulcer, uh, four into three centimeter in the region of disarticulation of the uh, left fifth, left little toe. And the base um, uh, uh, was the underlying fifth metatarsal head. Uh, the ulcer was not beginning to touch, and the surrounding skin uh, there was uh, pigmentation. This was uh, ulcer happened? as per edge, margin, etc. It will be a better way to, when you once you are seeing an ulcer. So it is better way to uh, say what is the ulcer base, uh, floor, edge, and margin because okay. we have already seen the base. Okay, madam. Now you said the base is head. So yes. you could see the head in the disarticulated area, head of the metatarsal. Head of the bone, yes, madam. I could see the head of the bone. The... Normally we retain the head or we remove the head after disarticulation? Uh, after disarticulation, madam, uh, uh, there is, um, um, uh, we normally um, remove the head of the metatarsal. But here it's not removed? Here it was not. Head. Yes, madam. Uh, there, it, the the uh, head was visible at the uh, base of the. Why do you normally uh, remove the head? Why do you disarticulate? Uh, why do you remove it? Uh, madam, because um, the uh, head, uh, uh, the uh, for the ulcer to heal, there should be uh, the granulation tissue will not develop over the uh, head uh, over the head of the metatarsal. Uh, why? So, but the, why? Why? Uh, because the because there is um, uh, because there is it, it, it's surrounded by articular cartilage uh, which uh, will not develop um, granulation tissue. It is a joint capsule, and that is articular surface is uh, cartilage I mean, which is relatively avascular. So yes, granulation tissue won't be there. Yes, ma'am. You can't cannot develop. So head has to be disarticulated. Okay? Yes, ma'am. So you are seeing head means it is incomplete, this article. Yes, so ideally, you should remove the head. Otherwise, it's not going to be. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And you said punched out ulcer, punched out edge, you said, right? Punched out goes in favor of? Uh, arterial. Arterial? Uh, uh, trophic ulcer, madam. Uh, trophic ulcers. Trophic ulcer. Hmm. Okay. 
uh, auscultation uh, there was uh, no bruit which was heard over the uh, bilateral lower limb vessels no for bruit over the lower limbs lower limb uh, vessels over so the femoral palpating only there is a question of bruit if at all you hear the bruit you should have heard somewhere else um Um, okay, here in the lower limbs, you're not you'll not be able to hear. Okay. Yes, madam. To summarize, uh, this is a 69-year-old male, a known diabetic, chronic uh, smoker, presented with a history of intermittent claudication of bilat of, uh, of both lower limbs, uh, which progressed to rest pain and gangrene of the left little toe, for which went disarticulation uh, of the left little toe. On examination, there was uh, loss of hair and darkening of skin of both the lower limbs below the below. Just the... like you are saying, it's a summary. You should say there were signs of ischemia, chronic ischemia. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's enough. Okay. Pulses were absent. Yes, madam. Pulses were absent. That left femoral pulsation you have written here, but in your examination you tell both the. Ah uh, no, madam. Ah uh, no, madam. Actually, both were absent. Ah, uh, I. This is a correction. Both were absent. Ma Indra, did you take the BP in all the limbs? Indra, this is a 16 year old diabetic, a chronic smoker. So, yes, any sir. peripheral vascular disease, <clears throat> you should take BP in all the four limbs. Yes, yes, sir. that is one thing which said. And we said there is pre gangrene, so there are four things in pre gangrene. Rest pain, edema, color change, and hyperesthesia. The four classical points of the pregangrenous. Rest pain, edema, color change, and hyperesthesia. Hyperesthesia. Okay. So How will you test for edema? You had said in inspection, but in palpation, you have not told about edema part. Uh, okay. That you have to include in your palpation. Yes, madam. So how will you test for edema? Uh, edema, uh, the uh, constant pressure um, uh, for more than five seconds uh, should be applied over the um, uh, against the against the bony prominence. Uh, here, I applied over the medial malleolus and against the tibial shin, uh, and uh, there was spitting pedal edema of bilateral lower limbs up to the um, level of the uh, up to the level of. Knee, bilateral, uh, both the knees up okay. to the level of. Till knee, it was edematous. Yes, yes, madam. Uh, Indira, uh, yes, sir. In your examination, let's go back to your general examination, please. Uh, right. There are certain markers for atherosclerosis. Yes, sir. What are they and have you looked for them? What are the markers, clinical markers for atherosclerosis in a in a in a person uh, there'll be um, 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 xanthal um which is um, uh, present over the um, uh, palpebral surfaces of the uh, eyelids uh, okay. okay there are numerous of them they will not go through them but they, are, they have to be mentioned okay okay sir okay you have not tested for, done a neurological assessment of the lower limb at all for touch, pain, temperature, and positional sense. You, know, you have not seen the gait of the patient. How does he walk? Okay, all these things are very important in a patient of peripheral vascular disease who has had an amputation before, right? Okay. Yes, because, sir. yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, please. And attitude of the limb also along the way. Okay, madam. Of the limb. Very important. Okay. And in pulse rate, also there you should have mentioned what is the, is the resil wall thickening. Very important. And since you mentioned all this, ABPI, you should have written that. Okay. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Yes, proceed now. Now, will, what will you do now? What is your diagnosis? Uh, my diagnosis is um, a peripheral, occlu peripheral occlusive arterial disease of both lower limbs, uh, left um, more involved than uh, right lower limb. Uh, etiology is um, uh, probably atherosclerotic in etiology. And clinically, yeah. where is the involved? Level. You must say. So, sorry, madam? Clinically, where is the block? You must say. Because uh, cl is uh, clinically, um, I think, uh, clinically, uh, by uh, the uh, level of occlusion will, 
uh, according uh, is uh, at the femoral uh, the fair superficial at the femoral artery madam both femorals are absent you said both and uh, uh, yes madam so it can be above femoral block yes madam it it could be uh, it, it could be either at the femoral or it could be uh, bilateral femoral or it could be at the um, ilia uh, at the um, bilateral iliac it could be iliac junction also yes madam right so if it was a young patient what other history you would have taken if the block was at iliac iliac junction um if it's a uh, there was a, a impotence uh, because uh, uh, lerich syndrome can happen yes. um, in um, iota iliac disease what is lerich syndrome uh, madam uh, there is um, iota iliac um, involvement uh, causing uh, impotence and uh, thigh and uh, buttock claudication uh, and um, um, it's a triad yes Importance, the gluteal claudication, absence of femoral pulses. These are the three. So, based on the extent, you have Lerich A one, two, and three. Okay, based. Okay. So, the bifurcation it is one. It is extends the extent. It extends down. It is two. Okay. Yes, sir. Then it extends further. It is three. Okay. Sir. Mm. Sir, so, how will you go about? um uh, i would like to investigate uh, i would like to confirm my diagnosis uh, so i would like to um, do a non invasive investigation uh, of a, a duplex scan uh, uh, of the bilateral arterial um, uh, of the of both, both the lower limbs uh, and um, uh, uh, there i would like to look for uh, the uh, Uh, the flow of the um, uh, the the blood flow the velocities of the blood flow at every level and uh, whether there is a presence of thrombosis whether there is presence of atherosclerotic plaques uh, and um, manage accordingly what next how will you manage further uh, uh, thira i may just come in in this yes, scan uh, ultrasound it consists of ultrasound and uh, b mode and doppler so doppler is for the flow Yeah. And B mode is for the anatomy. Yes, yes, so you yes. look for the thrombus. You look for the vessel contour, the anatomy, the wall structures, and any hematoma, abscesses, anything outside the wall. Yes, the vessel, right. And in Doppler, you see the flow direction, the flow pattern, the flow rate, right, and the flow yes, profile, whether it's monophasic or triphasic. So if yeah, the question is asked, you must divide it into two parts: B mode and Doppler and then tell this is what you're going to look for. Okay. Just don't say Doppler ultrasound and then go about it. Yes. Arterial duplex study. Duplex. Duplex exercise. It's called duplex, duplex ultrasound. Yes. Okay, you've done. You found all these things. What next you want to? Okay, uh, another question, Inter. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. What is the normal flow rate in an artery in the, in the in the femoral artery? Uh, sir, uh, normal flow rate. um surround um uh, at the femoral artery um i'm not sure sir it's about 50 cm per second it ranges from 40 to 75 over 75 what does it mean suppose it says you must have seen the doppler they write the flow rate below yes yes sir right? yes. so over 75 what does it mean uh over 75 means that there is uh, stenosis of the right. artery very good and below below 30 what does it mean uh that uh, uh below 30 there's a uh, complete occlusion uh, no not complete occlusion no. it's more than 50% occlusion okay, is more than 50% please what next uh next madam um i would um, uh, i would like to uh, go for a uh, ct angiogram uh, for this patient uh, to assess the um Uh, to assess the uh, anatomy of the um, vessels and also to uh, to assess the um, uh, exact location of the uh, uh, occlusion uh, and um, um, so in doppler in arterial duplex you would have got all this information no so what do you want ct angiogram uh, the uh, madam uh, if um, for a if i'm planning for a, a, a surgical uh, intervention then uh, Uh, a ct angiogram uh, would be better uh, because it will tell me uh, the distal runoff uh, yes. of 
most important is most important is this limb yes ma'am and so what is very very important is it's a chronic ischemia what we are interested in knowing is the amount of collateral which are giving support practically there is no blood supply through the standard pathway isn't it yes ma'am so, in addition to the distal run off what you are interested is the compensation by the different collaterals there yes ma'am so you so you you want to plan ct injury because you said you want to intervene right why do you yes, want to intervene on this patient his limb is otherwise looking normal except for the for the disarticulated one you still uh, want to do intervention uh, yes madam why uh madam because uh, the patient is um, having uh, because the patient is having rest pain patient is already developed okay. so he has symptoms and you want to treat him to relieve the symptoms yes, so you want ct injury right yes, now coming to the point when you know you definitely have to intervene and you definitely want a ct injury do you still need a color doppler arterial duplex um Uh, isn't it yes you have decided you have going to intervene so straight yes, is going for the angio so you know what is the problem you know the distal run off and depending on that you can plan your okay treatment okay. right yes, there is no here it is a limb saving which you want to do the attitude is limb saving attitude yes madam right. so you need to do this uh entira uh, yes. have you heard of this task 2 guidelines uh no sir uh well uh, the transatlantic inter society consensus document for this tells you how whether whether the limb will help by any intervention or not well okay. i will i won't go through it it's a big long thing right it tells okay, you whether sir. whether there's you have to do endo- endovascular treatment would be possible or you have to do a bypass and kind of okay Does it for planning treatment, whether yes, it requires sir. endovascular or surgical treatment? Okay, okay, sir. Okay, so the patient is in pain. So how will you manage? Will you have to give him symptomatic before you do all this kind of things? CT yes. and all that will come later. What will yes, you give him? Sir. You got to relieve his pain. Ah, uh, sir, um, the um, relieving pain um, will. Uh, have to um, start him on analgesics uh yeah, what is analgesics you give him all sorts of analgesics for pain anything else yes. what do you like to improve his circulation yes sir yes i would like how would you do that sir uh, uh, the drugs mm. like uh, silastazol uh, which will improve the reduce the viscosity and improve the circulation uh, icosprin uh, and uh, um, and uh, statins to um, to decelerate the process of atherosclerosis right. and okay, uh, okay that's fine that's fine that's fine so before you going for any kind of investigation ct it is most important to relieve his pain right yes yes sir otherwise uh, uh, he would not be so okay that's it then he is a diabetic so you have to control his yes, blood sugar level also you have to optimize the patient also for the because yes, that may uh, it is a vicious cycle Yes, infection ma'am. will increase the blood sugar so you have to take control of the infection of the ulcer how will you treat how will you decide for antibiotic is it necessary uh, in this patient um uh madam uh, the it was um um uh, on appearance um but uh, there would be uh, but it would be better to take a culture and uh, uh, titrate culture the antibiotics from where? according culture from to where? culture in terra where culture from uh, where from the ulcer base no oh no, that would that would be contaminated okay okay from a, bo- uh, a bone tissue uh, a bone uh, would be an ideal culture and no 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 why should you <laughs> it's a tissue culture okay Tissue okay tissue. about bone would you like to do tissue something tissue. before you go in for ct would you like to do some other industry simple uh, investigations an x ray x ray of the foot sir right x ray of the, yes. of the foot is very important yes right? why do you want an x ray um uh, uh, we would uh, want to know whether the um, 
uh, infection, whether there's osteomyelitis, uh, whether there's infection of the uh, uh, bones or the, the metatarsal. Osteomyelitis only. Why are you fumbling, Indra? You're answering. Why are you What about his uh, ulcer? How would you manage that? Uh, sir, um, uh, management of the ulcer, um, we would um, first, uh, 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 after, after taking cultures, we would give him uh, uh, daily dressings. Uh, and um, uh, we would also... Um, daily dressing, what do you mean by daily dressing? Just, uh, just put on a bandage every time, from changes bandage. Uh, no, sir. Um, uh, we, uh, we're doing the dressing to prevent any... Um, uh, oh, remove, uh, remove. What, what, what? You just come and say, okay, I'll do the dressing today. So you remove the bandages and apply new for fresh ones. Just clean it with some whatever solution. Look, Intira, you got to keep the, the, the ulcer clean. Yes. Right? Yes. They say the yes. solution to pollution is dilution. Wash it with a lot of soap water yes. and, and, and then just do a, keep it dry, dry dressing. Okay. Second is offloading of the foot. How would you offload the, the how would you offload this this ulcer? Um, what is offloading? Uh, giving, First uh, me, what is offloading? Uh, uh, sir, offloading is uh, uh, we uh, remove the um, uh, we we alter the uh, weight bearing uh, and um, very good. So how would you alter the weight bearing in this? Um, it's got ulcers uh, on the tip of the toe. Yes, yes sir. So how would you offload it? Uh, so, um, uh, so they, so they would be. Um, uh, I would give him a footwear which, uh, which will, uh, which will give him uh, uh, a thick uh, uh, padding at the level of the foot, uh, so that. No, okay, at the heel. Uh, they'll be. So the heel and the yes, the hind foot would be supporting the the weight of the body, and the forefoot would be the weight of the body rather than the foot. hanging in the air, right? So that would be offloading. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you've got to give drugs. You've got to see whether he's any anemic or not. Build up his hemoglobin, control his blood sugar, control his infection, offload, manage his ulcer, yes. offload the uh, the the foot. These are the basics before you go in for all those treatment. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. As a general surgeon, I would be happy if you tell me all this before you tell me anything. Yes, sir. Another first one, sir, please, is stop smoking. Yes, sir. Stop smoking. Very good, life. sir. Very good. If you tell him to stop smoking, will he stop smoking? Ethira, you, you tell him to stop smoking, will he stop smoking? Uh, sir, uh, he, uh, but he may stop temporarily, but there is also very high Come chance. Come on, his wife must have been, how, after his life to stop smoking, he's not stopped. How will he listen to you? He will never listen to you. I say he will not listen, sir. So what will he do? What will you do to get him to stop smoking as a surgeon? As a surgeon, uh, sir. Uh, don't, don't tell me you'll threaten to cut off his limb if he doesn't stop smoking. That doesn't help either. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. You tell him to smoke half of it and throw it away. If he smokes a full cigarette, tell him to smoke half of it and throw it away. Give him nicotine patches. Nicotine. Send him for counseling. Right? So these are the ways. Right. So what next? You know that there is a block probably at the ileal junction or in the bilateral common iliac. So what will you look for? Is there, Do you have the film? Angiogram, CT angio film? Yes, madam. Put it. Hmm. You can see a diffuse disease. <coughs> yes, madam. Diffuse disease. Yes, madam. Diffuse disease practically the left foot. Nothing is visible. <laughs> yes, there, right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. so either the distal runoff nor the collateral. Mm -hmm. It's gone. Yes, madam. So, what do you wish to do? Non-healing ulcer, breast pain, hyperesthesia, and no visible vessels in the foot lobe. Yes. How would you like to go about? 
madam uh, i would like to um, uh, um, i would like to perform uh, madam there was uh, on the uh, uh, ct angiogram uh, there was uh, evidence of uh, thrombosis uh, which was present in the uh, left uh, femoral artery uh, superficial femoral artery uh, so um, uh, i would um, what was the report now what is it reported read the report uh, um there was um, um, a ct angiogram showed diffuse atherosclerotic wall changes of the abdominal aorta common iliac external and internal iliac and of the bilateral lower limbs and uh, the right common iliac uh, immediately after extending uh, suggestive of thrombosis suggest and there was a, a thrombosis of uh, sfa of both sides it's a diffuse disease as you said and also long segment of thrombus so is intervention possible any vascular surgeon in our group Don't have a vascular surgery. Professor Shri Kumar is there. Good comments from him, sir. I think he's here left. Okay, Professor Shri Kumar. Rajiv, sir, please. Sir. Yeah, which is the main artery of the of the leg? The main artery of the leg is the uh, fem the common femoral artery, sir. No, no, I'm 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 not talking the lower limb. I'm talking not the thigh, the leg. Okay, uh, the leg, sir. Uh, the leg is uh, the uh, popliteal artery. Sir. Okay, and then the, then it divides into. And the popliteal artery. Okay. Okay. Let me put it the other way of the foot. Which is the of main the artery foot. of the foot here? Of the foot, uh, the uh, anterior tibial and the posterior tibial arteries. Sir. No, and it is posterior tibial. Okay. Posterior. Yes. Okay. Sir. Have you heard of angiosomes? Yes, sir. What are they? What are the angiosomes in the lower, in the foot? Uh, angiosomes are uh, they are uh, regions which are supplied uh, by the uh, by the terminal branches of the uh, uh, arteries, uh, which are um, uh, okay. Like dermatomes, the 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 foot is divided into angiosomes, which are yes, supplied yes. by the three arteries. Which are the three arteries? Uh, the um, uh, the posterior tibial artery. And, yeah, yeah, go on. Uh, I said uh, the posterior tibial artery, the uh, uh, anterior tibial artery. Yes, and and the um, uh, the. Yes, no. Third one, peroneal. The peroneal artery, yes. Right. So uh, these are the angiosomes, right? So yes. if this person has got a ulcer on which toe, the, the right toe. The, the little toe. fifth toe, yes, sir. The little toe. Okay, so fifth toe. So which uh, artery do you think is is really gone now? Which the, is the one which applies a little? Uh, the peroneal, peroneal artery. No, peroneal just applies the at the at the at the heels, right? That's yes, the angiosome. This is the posterior tibial. Tibial, yes, sir. Right, the the lateral plantar artery, branch of artery of the posterior tibial. Yes, sir. This is the one. Okay, one question which I think I'll just ask you. I'll not give the answer. What are yes, choke sir. vessels? Have you heard of them? What are choke vessels? Choke vessels? No, sir. I haven't heard. Of. Okay, these are actually angiosomes are supplied by the main artery, but there are certain arteries which which supplied between the two angiosomes. Okay. And they are the choke vessels, and they are important because they are the forms which form the collaterals. Okay. Okay, sir. Just a bit of an add. Yes. Great, ma'am. Please, ma'am. So, with this CT angiogram, what you would like to do, Dr. Indra? Uh, madam, uh, it's uh, um, because of the, because there is extensive uh, diffuse atherosclerotic uh, involvement. Um, uh, there would be uh, difficult to plan any uh, surgical intervention in this patient, madam. Uh, so I would uh, offer the patient uh, medical management uh, uh, where uh, with the cosprin, uh, silastrozole, uh, atorvastatin, uh, which will decelerate the process of the atherosclerosis. Uh, also, um, I would give him uh, management of uh, the pain um, uh, with um, uh, analgesia and um, vasodilators. 
and uh, there would also be um, management of the ulcer with uh, uh, offloading of the foot and um, con controlling of the sugars and um, no with this almost practically hmm, <clears throat> rest pain is there persistent non healing ulcer for quite a some time so yes. do you really think that our analgesic therapy and our local wound care is going to take care of these two issues uh the rest pain madam uh, has to be uh, can manage with uh, uh, amitriptyline uh, drugs which um, or gabapentin uh, like uh, drugs which can cause um, uh, which should treat neuropathic pain madam but um, for long term it will it will not be uh, helpful only symptomatic relief uh, shall be provided with the uh, um, with, with Yeah, asking about symptomatic relief itself. Which are Intera, those? Sorry, intera. Very helpful. Yes. The only two ways you can do improve is either you increase the blood supply or decrease the demand. Okay. Right. These are the only two ways. Yes, right? sir. So how will you increase the supply now? You've done everything to yeah. decrease the demand and given all the drugs and all. Now the only way to increase the supply or blood supply is how? Uh, sir, uh, they uh, could. um plan for a um and an, an angioplasty sir um, so this is a very large segment yes sir which is involved right on segment so, with multiple atherosclerotic cells right. lax yes sir so so can you do any endovascular thing in this i mean endovascular would be difficult in this sir right uh, so what is what is now possible a surgical uh, Surgically, uh, an uh, an aorto, but then uh... <clears throat> look, you can either bypass or you can increase the head pressure. Yes, sir. Increase the the blood flow at the top so that it opens up the collaterals. Yes, sir. So, so what kind of surgery would you think would be possible in this? Uh, sir, um, by bypass won't be um... yes you try can there are people who are doing, with micro surgery they are doing this that's the only thing possible here now yes sir it is bypass and there is a long segment it should be i don't know sir it, it must be a too lengthy one it should be yes it's very long uh, femoral distal or something like that Because it's not even aorta that this is, it's a diffuse disease from the big from right. the aorta area. So lifestyle changes. I mean, you is have to. Only conservative will help. How much surgery will help? I'm not very sure. Endarterectomy, all that. I don't know how much it will help. It's a long. Okay, Tira, what is the role of sympathetic me? Uh, sir, uh, sympathetic me uh, can help this patient, sir, uh, because there will be. Uh, Uh, dilatation of the um, uh, it will cause dilatation of the uh, vascular uh, of the vessels to the lower limb uh, and also uh, wow. what does sympathetic me do what does it do it does it it increases supply to which portion uh, sir it sub increases supply to um, the uh, to the muscle or to the skin um, <clears throat> So that you should know what the what is lumbar sympathetic the sympathetic plexus does. It produces vascular dilatation of the muscles and but as a constriction of the skin. Sympathetic to me it reverses. So that will be increased supply. So sympathetic to me the classical indication is only digital ischemia and minute cutaneous ulcer. There are okay. two classical indications. Right. But as Sir said, you should know about it. Okay. Yes. Cutaneous ulcer and digital ischemia. The patient comes early. If you do it, what will happen is the vascular dilatation to the skin increases, so the ulcer will heal and the digital ischemia will vanish. Yes. But the patient don't come to you at this stage. Yes. It is a yes. temporary procedure. If the patient But, continues smoking, patient do continue smoking. Yes. So again, it is it recurs. Can we, sir? Can we finish? 
Yeah, nah. I think we are okay, sir. And, uh, yes. We will allow the candidate to ask any doubts or anything, yeah, sir, candidate. before we call up. Intra? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir, uh, sir had asked me about the task. Uh, is it task criteria, sir? I, 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 I shall go read it up. Is it task or? Uh, yes, okay. task. Okay. Okay. Task 2. Okay, sir. Okay. PSC. Task 2. PSC. Oh, okay, sir. And. Uh, I think we have uh, Professor R.C. Shrikumar also. Uh, sir, are you with us, sir? I'm here. I'm just listening it. Are you, what is, <laughs> do you like to give your comments, sir, before closing? Yeah. Uh, so, the question was fine. Uh, regarding task criteria, uh, can I explain the task? Yeah. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Yeah. Task criteria is, in fact, uh, it's a, a historical event because uh, uh, there is a controversy between the US and European group. US is more aggressive in uh, angioplasties, but the European group is more in surgeries. So they have a uh, controversy. So they have a consensus called the Transatlantic Society for Consensus. Task is looking for three aspects. One is what is the site of occlusion, uh, the type of occlusion, then length of occlusions. So site is whether it's iotalia, femoral, or distal part. And uh, site type is uh, full occlusion of stenosis. Third is uh, the, the number is where say single occlusion, multiple occlusions or long occlusions. So considering these three factors, we can classify them into task A, B, and C. Uh, essentially task A is a small lesions, mostly in the higher levels, uh, single lesions, mostly uh, non-occlusive lesions or stenotic lesions. They preferably go for angioplasty and task C is long lesions, uh, multiple lesions, occlusive lesions, preferred option is bypasses. So that's, uh, uh, that is B is maybe depending on whether the surgeon or the uh, in, uh, patient condition and all those things. So that is task A, B, and C. This is essentially a task C lesion because it's a long lesion, more than 10 centimeter, involving femoral artery, as a uh, completely occluded, there is no stenosis, it's a complete occlusion. So it's a task C lesion. So ideally this lesion is uh, ideal for bypass, fumbo bypass. So that's about uh, my comments on this thing. Probably femoral distal bypass, sir. Yes, sir, this is, yes ma'am, yes, ma this is ideal yes. for a uh, uh, distal bypass. Distal bypass. Uh, more than 15 centimeter uh, long lesion. So it's uh, 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 ideal for bypass because Angioplasty may be attempted if the patient is financially very well off. Long stents are available, but it's very costly. And the long-term results are still, if the, depending on the patient's general condition, if the patient can live for more than 10 years, definitely I'll go for a bypass. But if the patient can live only for less than two to five years, then I'll prefer to go for angioplasty in this patient. Practically, sir, even femoral distal, this patient, what will be his results, sir? Even if you see the distal vessels, the terminal ends are not well seen. Uh, show the previous picture, uh, Indra. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. You can see the uh, problem. Ma'am, uh, this patient is ideal for bypass because there is at least uh, two vessels distal to popliteal. That is, uh, even though there's, yeah. Uh, the three, uh, three vessels is partly there, but two vessels are long vessels. Yes. So, ideally, this patient is ideal for a bypass. Definitely, right. I'll go for a bypass. And, and definitely, this patient. Yes, Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, ma'am. Any, Thank any, you, sir. any doubts from the PGs? I think sir has cleared everything. Anything Bhagata, else? ma'am. Any closing comments, ma'am? Tejas, ma'am. Thank you, sir. It was a really good session. Yes. And both the postgraduates presented really well. Discussion yes. was very fruitful. I definitely hope that all the students who have participated have learned and including us also. Thank you. Thank you so much for Thank you, ma'am. Swagata, ma'am. Any other comments? The sessions were very good. And uh, we generally want our students to be more clinically inclined and uh, basics there should be right. So they have a uh, good show. Can I, well, sir, can I make one? Can I, can I make one Please, comment? Sir. Yes, sir. Most because, welcome, sir. Uh, Please go ahead. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, this case has a person by Dr. Sajin, who is uh, another third resident. He prepared the case and he prepared the topic, but he was uh, stuck up in a casualty duty, emergency case. So it's, uh, she cannot be free by seven or so. Then I asked immediately to Dr. Indira to take up the task. She <laughs> she good, immediately good, accepted good. my my request and she made it. Yes, so, and I think she did justice for her presentation, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Very Thank well you. done. Thank you. Very sir. well done, Intra. Very well done. So the Thank last you. question sir, to answer, sir, Shrikumar, sir. 
Yes. Last question is that where will yes, you take info sir, from? Yes, ma'am. Professor Bapat has asked. Can I go, can I go, sir? Ma'am, 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 ma'am,